All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the October Yarnier midweek meetup. Um, we are mostly just going to hang out this time. Um, I really wanted to take the opportunity to sit down and hang out with friends and work on the little pumpkin. You can see I have a little hand cam that it's just going to have to be oriented that way because it's a big production to change it. So um, not for a lesson, because like I said, I've never I've never made this particular project before, but just um, just for fun, funsies. So if any of you are making this and need an actual tutorial, there is a like an in-depth one by Elizabeth, the designer. It's on the little piece of paper that comes with the kits, but I'm also going to stick it in the chat so you have it. Um, if you're watching it while you're on with us, please mute your mic though. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, but we we do definitely want to hear from people about what they're making as well. Uh, for just a refresher for folks that are maybe coming on later, watching the recording, um, I'm going to be working on one of the felted pumpkins that came in the October box. If you have not already bought the October box, you have about what are we at? Three days, four days, five days? About five days left of um, being able to get the October box at the subscriber price, which saves some money. So check that out. And that comes with one of these cute little pumpkin kits. And um, Elizabeth from the Felted Sky Studio, she made these kits just for us. She has her own, but they come with several pumpkins. So it was it was really cool um, that she was able to put together uh, a little a little bite-sized trial for us. So I've been looking forward to it. I've been meaning, as always, to whip out a bunch of these ahead of time. I really think these would be cute on my fireplace, on a Thanksgiving table. Um, and because there's already this, you know, core quilted ball, it shouldn't be too, too difficult to um to get done so that's what i'm going to work on i'm gonna see if i can zoom in i don't know if i can no nope, maybe not there we go okay so that's what i'm going to be doing for now uh later i would love to be able to not show you my filthy studio that was not the intention um, i'd love to be able to maybe do a few Halloween giveaways. I've got three pumpkin purses. So if you didn't come to the retreat and don't have one or haven't bought one already, or if, if you have, you'll have a gift to give. Uh, we'll be giving those away. I am going to, because I straight up, it's been a little bit of a day, um, going since 5 a.m. this morning. I'm gonna pull random trivia questions that I find during, direct from the godmother of our modern day crafting herself martha stewart halloween magazines awesome. so i bring i i don't know about you guys but part of my halloween decorations every year are to bring out magazines that i've collected so i do it for christmas too and so i have um you know going back probably i mean at least a decade if, if not two i mean how long has it been since she had her own halloween magazine Nobody did it better. This particular issue I loved because it had good things or it had bad things on one side and then you flipped it over and it was good things. I was wow. like, well done, well done. You should do this for a living, Martha. So anyways, um, I'm gonna just randomly pick some stuff and um, we will do a few giveaways. Oh, this is from 07. So what is that? That's the year I got married. So it was like 16, 17 years ago. Yeah. So they've, it's been a minute, but I always, um, not just her magazines. I have a bunch of different magazines that I like to spread them out and just have it as part of the theme. So I'll pull some random craft related stuff. We'll do that, you know, a little bit towards the end. And other than that, uh, I would love to hear obviously what you're working on, but for those of you that do Halloween, um, I'm really interested in hearing what your costumes are gonna be if you're doing it, or if you're working on a kiddo's costume, then um, tell us about it. We had one year we had um, one of our yarn years was making her three granddaughters, um, 
the sisters costumes from Hamilton. And that one, I was like, that's, that's like legit grandma. Like, she, like she won, she won all the prizes. Uh, but I would love to hear about that as well. So um, as far as what I'm working on these days, so I made, I left it downstairs. I should have brought it up. I thought that I was going to have uh, the hexagon. I, I'll tell you why I paused. There's a reason. The hexagon cardigan that is from Make and Do Crew that Becky chose as one of her alternative patterns or one of the go big patterns for uh, this month's yarn. I really, really love this month's yarn. Um, it's the Anne Make Erin, in case any of you are unfamiliar, um, in one of two colors. And it's got just like this whisper, this halo um, that just makes it really super cozy. And it's I love working with it. So I wanted to do a sweater out of it. And the piece is two heptagons and then they're extended at the sleeves and you know at the back a little bit and then there's some like cuffs and that kind of thing but it starts out as you've probably all seen the granny square even if you're not a crocheter you've probably seen those granny square sweaters where it's like you fold it over what is it chris is it it is it normally a rectangle that you fold over Fold over two, and it's the arm. Uh, yeah. Something like that. It's something like that. Well, there's another one that's a hexagon, um, and so I don't know. It's some kind of witchcraft. It's amazing, and so I really wanted to make it because it was going to also be fast. Um, but I didn't realize until I'd made the second one or started the second one that, that the whole first one only had five sides so it was not at all a hexagon um so I had to rip out the entire piece like an entire I had already done all the extensions I had done all the things uh -huh. but that's what you get when you you know are trying to do all of the things at one time so so that's kind of one of the things I just finished the December box project it's blocking over there I am about to, I wanted to have it done by now, but aforementioned day, um, I'm about to launch sale for the Christmas mini retreat for those of you that are available. Ooh, super Ooh. fun. Yeah, um, for those of you that came to the Halloween one, um, we had a really good time and I just thought we would do it again. It's gonna be the same format, six hours, completely doable you know, tutorials. This time I'm going to give a little more homework so we have more time to work on the things during. Um, so I should have, it'll be on December 9th from 11 to 5, which is a Saturday. I'm working on all the details. Chris and I are working to get it up on the website. As always, while I'm sourcing stuff, there might be some little details that change, but at least you'll get the base. Um, info. So we're hoping to have that. I really wanted to have it done today, but by tomorrow, I'm going to go for, it'll go out first to our box subscribers and then probably a day or so later, we'll open it up wide. So if you're interested and available, it'll be super fun. We're going to do um, little tabletop uh, tree skirts, both knit and crochet options. Um, you'll do a basic one ahead of time. I'll provide you with the pattern. And then we're gonna spend much of the time doing different embellishments. I'm gonna show how to do an edging for, uh, they'll both have Pico edgings, but we'll be adding beads. So that'll be a fun new addition, but it's beads on like a worsted weight yarn. So it's gonna be this, one of the trends for this holiday season is that whole sort of like, earthy woodland vibe. So we're going to be using cotton. We're going to be using um, wooden beads. And then we'll be doing a couple embroidery um, embellishments that are totally optional. I'm going to show you how to make a little tassel tree to go on it. We're going to embroider a poinsettia if you're interested. I'm going to show a couple other little baubles. And then there, of course, will be a thematic cocktail and a thematic hot drink. I've already sourced them and they're so cute. Um, and I've got a couple little, you know, holiday mint, uh, beauty items, and then we'll make, um, sort of like we did for the Halloween version, um, which was charm stitch markers for this one. We'll do the same, only we're going to make more and I'm going to try to source, or I might glow forge them 
just slightly larger charms to make into either large stitch markers or, but the intent is, is for you to be able to hang them on your tabletop tree. So it could be sort of like a dual action. You might have to slip a bulb pin on, take the thing off or whatever. We're going to, I'm going to work that out, but um, that's the sort of general vibe. So we'll focus, we'll, we'll kind of try and do the majority of the, of the work work ahead of time so that we can go in and really focus on the details and have fun because we just kind of ran out of time last time. So we realized that we just want to sort of really be able to get into it. So I think it's going to be really fun. There, of course, will be a Christmas um, or holiday music list uh, to listen to if you want. And I'll have Google Slides thing to give you all the information. So look for that in your inboxes. Other than that, I've got a million projects. We're going to, I don't know if I told you, we're going to Iceland next month for my 50th. And so I'm trying to plan out what I want to knit there. Um, and also try to get all of the things done so that we can get your advent out. We are working on that. We're so close and I cannot wait for you guys to get the, there's so much yarn and it's so pretty. So we're gonna get that out. Um, we're going to do, we're going to get the retreat kits out. Of course, November boxes are about to come up. We're really close to the unboxing for that. So working on all of those things. All right. I think I've talked enough. Who I'm going to dive in and just get started while we're, um, while we're all sharing. Chris, uh, you want to talk about what you're wearing and, or how about, and what you're working yeah. on? If there is an and. I am wearing the trail finder towel made out of this month's yarn and it's just this big giant columns of ribbing and I just love it you know this yarn oh, is that's just... so pretty wait so remind everyone where where this pattern came from this comes from double checking was it one of theirs it it's was one of theirs right? comes from fiber company yeah Okay, we'll put that link in the in the chat. Uh, that how many balls did that take? About one and a half. But as you can see, it is like oh, it's glorious. Super long and cushy. And if you touch this month's yarn, you'll know. Oh, it's that feels lovely. Just feels lovely. Long enough that you can pull it up over your ears, over the top of your head. Is it one? It could be a little shorter. Is it cool enough to wear it in California? No. You? Okay. No. I appreciate you taking one for the team for that. And I'm no, glad that I called on you first so you didn't have to sweat through that. I, I um, appreciate cool. that as well. Thank you very much. And then uh, are you, I mean, is that what you just finished or are you working on something else? I am embarrassed to say I'm still working on the same project from last month. I mean, you're embarrassed. To me, I call that Tuesday. <gasps> this is the Drew sweater vest. I do have the oh, back yeah. one side done. Oh, well, that's a full garment. That's there a is... full garment. But this does have the lovely, like, detail it's... that's next to the button band and the lovely inline buttonholes as well. Oh, that's beautiful. So everyone, pray for cool weather in California so that that can happen. I mean, you should okay. be getting some. Chris, you can come up to Northern California and visit me. Oh, that's yesterday. true. Just go visit Claudia. I'll go. That's an excellent idea, Claudia. Thank you. I was just in, um, I just got back, well, not just, a week ago, I got back from the Lakewood, Long Beach area, and it was, it was really hot. It was, it was pretty hot. I was kind of. For October? It's, for it's for October. Much. I mean, granted, it was cooler than here in Texas, but not the the big reprieve that I expected to get. So I'm thinking I'm thinking good thoughts. You want to talk to us about your the flags behind you? Although plastic, this is a traditional Mexican paper cut decoration. Yes. For Day of the Dead. And I think they're super cool. Always have. Yeah, there's um there's some really beautiful intricate versions of those. Um I really love them. And I feel like I've seen some stitched adaptations 
I have two. And I, I, have two. I don't know where, but that's, that's on the list because we're about to put up our day of the dead altar that we put up every year. Um, for all of our peeps. And one of these years I'm going to get to having those as well. I, I know a crochet designer that does a lot of stuff that's sort of similar to this. It's got to be crochet, right? And I mean, it, seems like unless it it's crazy color work and who would do that? Oh, no. You have, to have the, you have to have the negative space for it to be, yeah. to yeah. have the... Yeah. yeah. Love it. All right, cool. Cool. Done. Um, Mona, what are you working on? And or, oh wait, before Mona, hold on one second. Chris, I, I don't, we haven't talked about this. Are you, do you do anything for Halloween? Do you hand out candy? Do you go anywhere? Do you? Uh, I probably won't be because it is the night before the first when boxes ship and I will be working for Yarnay all evening. Well, we could probably, we could probably work it out if you had, if you had a hot date, we could probably. Not on a Tuesday, not this year. I know it's Tuesday too. Yeah, it's going to be a quiet one for sure. I'm in the middle. I promise I'll stop monopolizing the the talk time, but I forgot to talk about my Halloween thing. I'm in the middle of a costume for my youngest. Um, Clover wants to be this obscure, no, this character from this obscure Canadian musical um, called... Uh, Ride the Cyclone, and the character is called Jane Doe, and we couldn't find it. It requires a school uniform, and we couldn't find the right, but it's like a pinafore. So I'm currently in pleats hell. Um, oh my gosh, it's a lot of pleats. It's a lot of pleats, and we'll see. I'm we'll see. So that's just one part of it. So I've got that, and then we've got a full long uh, blonde wig that I'm going to have to. FaceTime with one of my best friends who's a hairstylist or my sister-in-law because we have to cut it and give it like Nellie Olson curls and there's a whole thing all of that to have friends over to watch movies on on Halloween but you know, a good mother you got to do it well I mean I got one like I can't complain about like because my other two would have none of this like none of them things and so when you get one you get what you asked for but I was just like pleats okay let's do it so that's where I'm at with that. Okay, now for real, Mona, you're on. Um, I'm actually working on a little felted pumpkin from the- Excellent. I saw your post about pulling yours out and I thought, well, I'll do the same thing. I'll make one too, awesome. you know? Uh, and then I'm almost done with my, my baubles for my pillowcase from the Halloween retreat. Oh, I have that. Oh, you can cool. see it in the hand cam. That's where I'm, I need to revisit that project too. I finally- <laughs> I like how it was my my thing and I still didn't have pillows. I just today ordered the pillows for them. So oh yeah, I have the pillow, but yeah, I'm almost done the other side. Um so I'll be able to it'll be in time for Halloween, so I'll be good. That's what I figure. Or yeah. for me, on on the actual holidays, I like to have a thematic project. So even if that's what I'm making on Halloween. Yeah. What yeah. I'll do. Yeah. And then I've been working on the headband. Um from September? From September for yeah. Christmas presents. Oh, uh, good. My daughter-in-law and my soon-to-be daughter-in-law making the headband. And then I'm using the same yarn to make the crochet uh, wrist warmers from the Halloween retreat to go with it. Oh, just the, are you going to embroider on them? I don't know. I was thinking about it. Yeah. Maybe just Maybe the color on color, like you did the black on the black. Yeah, and you, you have the, yeah. um, just pull out the embroider knit book that you already have and you can use any of those flowers on it. It doesn't have to be the spider web that's situation true. we did. That's true, but they'll match the headband. So that's gonna be their Christmas present this year. So. Oh, I love that. You know what? I think um, like the good old, can you see this under the rose would probably look really oh, yeah. tone on tone if you did like bigger ones and then small ones around it. Yep. That would probably be really pretty. Yep. Oh, cool. Well, share a picture, please, when you're when you're done. Because yeah, I great. will. I will. Um, yeah. Halloween, do you do Halloween? I 
just to, I just decorate the house. We give out candy. We don't yeah. get a lot of here. Um, but I am going to be dressing up for an all hands next week for work. We're doing a Halloween all hands and we're asking people to dress up and there's going to be a little contest at the end using Minty. And I decided I'm going to dress up as a chicken. Okay. I mean, why not? <laughs> so I wanted something cute. So what does that entail? Uh, you know, I just end up buying a beak and a little chicken thing to put a headband to put on my head, the little crown thing. Oh, you did it. Um, and I bought, you know, feather boas and I bought a white bodysuit and I'm going to try to make something. Um, so it's going to be handmade. We'll see how it turns out. Wow. I'm only going to be on camera from, you know, the chest up. So I don't have to go crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Well, that's amazing. Love it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, lady. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Sarah, I feel like you have a, you have some crochet on display that we need to see. Yes, I did do um, uh, one of my first wearables, my second wearable, I guess. Uh, this one was um, in Hershner's Halloween yarn, sparkle yarn. So it is sparkly. You can't really quite tell, but it's, it's made out of- spectacular. Yeah, it's made out of two, um, two triangles and two big granny squares. So- yeah, I so I was festive for handing out candy because we are we're in one of those neighborhoods where people bring in their kids. Oh, that's so fun! And so yeah, I love it because I grew up. My brother and I were the only kids in the neighborhood, so we would go trick or treating and get apples and pennies and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> so, so this is a big change for me. Ever since I've been down here in Texas, I, we've we've had a really good neighborhood for it. So. We remind just me, go out remind me where in Texas you are again? Uh, we're in Round Rock. Oh. Yeah, so we're real close. <laughs> yeah. Like 45 minutes away. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we just sit out in the driveway and, and in lawn chairs and hand out candy. That's fun. Yeah. We, um, we don't really get anybody because our whole entire neighborhood doesn't have street lights at all. Oh. Because it's all like everybody's got an acre. So it's mm -hmm. like a normal, it's like a neighborhood, but, but with, you know, wilderness. And so, and so because the houses aren't close enough together and because there's no light, we just don't get anybody, but we have like just around the corner, if you go through, there's a, more of a, like a traditional neighborhood that gets a lot of kids. So we go over there, but well, we, not anymore. I, we don't have any trick-or-treaters anymore, but we, we used to do that every year. So um, I think it's just all spooky movies and teenagers this year. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah, because but but, uh, you know, I'm from Illinois, so half the time in my childhood, we'd go trick-or-treating in our snowsuits, snow. yeah. you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, all of our costumes covered up by coats and stuff like that, so. When yeah. I was yeah. little, I lived in Denver, and it was the same thing back then. I mean, I'm old, but so the costumes were like those plastic masks and like the paper whatever oh, yeah. and I have a vivid memory of being Holly Hobby one year but I had with a parka over it so uh-huh yeah I had the Wonder Woman costume like that because no, that was a good one that's a collector now that one it is I don't know if I still have it anywhere but yeah because I'm 47 so I'm I'm right uh, catching up to you You're catching so. up yeah <laughs> But you know, it's funny here, some years we'll be in tank tops and sweating and dying. And some years it's like, you know, misting and cold. So you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. I'm thinking it's supposed to, last time I looked at the weather, it's supposed to be in the fifties. I know that's exciting. I know. So I'm crossing my fingers because then I can wear my sweater. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually like, you won't get hot if you're in a costume and all the things. So, yeah. 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 And the only other thing that I've worked on, well, I've been working on a lot of things, but I did think that people would be interested because um, I had done the crochet version of the assigned pooling in um, uh, the 400 gram skein. Oh, that I bought. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. So I did that. And um, so now I just did with the, the box skein. Uh, that I just made it. I have not blocked it yet, but I just made that. And let's see, is this the right side? Yeah, this is the right side here. Wait, so you made you made both the big one and the small one? I made both the big one. Yeah, I made the big one for myself because I thought, well, if I if I screw up, it's on mine. So who cares? 
but this one is for my sister-in-law for Christmas. So um, I'm going to block it and, and it'll be pretty. So love it. Wow. <laughs> so but that's the difference in size. It's quite a big difference, but she's got a way smaller neck than I do. So uh, she will be fine. <laughs> well, you can also do any number of little, like you can do little cuffs, the little bolero things work. Even like yeah. they've got some really pretty brass, like safety pins even, or yeah. you could do, it would be kind of cute with um, a vintage flower brooch because of the, you know, the flower situation going on um, with the yarn. So there's a lot of options if it doesn't, if it's not big enough to tie around her neck. True. Yep. And this is Maya. Hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. Another good <laughs> accessory. I know, right? Yep. Uh, well, she gives me all my accessories of the cat hair over everything. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had um, we had some cat drama in our house. We had a we have a rescue kitten, and her mom. We just found out that her mom tested positive for feline leukemia, which is very contagious. Oh. oh. Yeah. So we went in and we took her in, and she's unfortunately positive. Um, and they. It, it's possible she could grow at, it depends that there's all these different levels out of it or whatever, but we have two cats that could have also been in, one elderly and one, you know, like middle-aged cat. So it's just been this whole debacle. We took them in today. They're fortunately, they tested negative. So we had to get them vaccinated, but we have to, for the next two weeks before we leave for our trip, we have to keep them completely separate. And the, the little kitten just like is so sad not to be around the other cats and it's drama. So, so yeah. That, yeah, that was a lot of stuff. Um, okay, let's see. Claudia, what are you working on? Are you on sweater gate still? I'm working on my card again. Um, um, I don't know why the echo is coming through. I don't either. Um, weird. Okay. Um, working on that, I have um, uh, just the front bands to go. I just um, pick up stitches for the button band, and then I have the, the buttonhole bands do and I will be done as soon as I can get to the store and get buttons. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but I also did something I never ever do, which is join a mystery knit along. Oh, you do never do that. What I do, well, what so, got you? Hey, it's a Laura Nelkin middle. Oh, and so beads and lace. What beads and lace? No, not. That's the thing. It's a oh. smaller project. It's just a cowl. Um, but it's like it uses weird techniques and I've learned new stitches and new techniques and new way to craft. And I'm learning a lot from it, so I'm really enjoying it. And it's also sized so that the crews come one week apart and they're totally doable in a few days. Oh. So I won't be falling behind, which is one of the things that I don't like about knit alongs is I'm never a fast enough. Um, I'm never a fast enough knitter. So it's not hard to believe. I, no, I'm terribly slow. I'm terribly slow. With the size pieces that you're always working on, you're slow? Yeah, but look how long they take me. <laughs> I mean, they take, and I have no stuff. gauge because I never have the patience to do any of what you do. Yeah. So I know. It seems like it takes a normal amount of time to me, but well, right. that's awesome. What's the name of the, uh, so it's a, oh, Chris is already on it. It's the, um, it's the, uh, it's the theme is owls. So like there are stitches in the, the pieces you do that you're going to draft together. There are stitches that look like feathers and ones that look like the little tufts on their ears. And it's, it's not like super tree or anything. I, I think they're really nicely designed and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So. Oh, good. Well, that's funny. I did that. I you love Lauren Alka. Yeah, I've taken classes from her. And people yeah, no, she's good people too. So. And her, you know, her, her videos and her instructions are all so well done that it's been really fun. No, 
no surprises, no mistakes. It's been good. Um, Amazing. My Halloween, my employer goes bonkers for Halloween. And this has really? been a 20 year tradition that they've been going all out for Halloween. Okay. So we always have a theme, and you're supposed to try to dress in a theme. And this year's theme is really strange. It's called CD Hell. CD Hell? Um, S E E D Y. Yeah. hell so like gross yeah dilapidated kind of hell and it, the, it's a pun on the initials of our organization is c d l like you can uh, see in my uh, name or zoom here yeah but i um i coming up everyone was having such a hard time with costumes and then it came to me the the series good omens yeah, uh, had just the seediest hell you've ever seen as their vision of hell in some of the shots. So I decided to be Agnes Nutter, the witch who gets burned at the stake, and she wears like um, she gets burned at the stake in the 17th century. But I have a costume that I can, even though I know it's not 17th century, I can get away with it. And she wears this lace collar so i'm just going to use one of my shawls to substitute for the lace collar oh i love and, that so yeah and it, i have a whole speech going and my zoom background is a picture of hell in that so i'm really excited about it That's it was fun not a big thing to do but for once for once i have something that i really am happy about matching the costume to the um the theme so yeah that's that sounds so fun is it just a yeah. is it just for a lunch or a meeting or it's like an hour and a half long it's just sort of in the middle like it's around lunchtime but it's not a lunch and it's because so many people have to be remote it's gonna you you can go to the office if you want but most of the people are going to be on zoom so a little bit hard to show up your costume on Zoom, but I think I can do it because most of the interest is at the top anyway. So that's like my yeah, exactly. yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know it's so easy when you don't have to make a bottom for it. Uh, yeah, right. Class. Yeah, you don't have to do pleats. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that would cut out yeah. a lot of pleats. And I had, I had the, the dress I'm wearing, it was one I had, I did a number of years ago when I was Madame Defarge. From the Tale of Two Cities for Halloween. Yeah. So, just even though the, it's 100 years wrong, there's no costume historians where I work. So, I'll, okay. I, Only you with your background yeah, right. call that out, though. Yeah. I mean, I feel guilty, but I'm going to get over it. So, that's what I'm doing for Halloween. That sounds amazing. I'm looking forward to it. You have to make sure to share a picture. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Gail, what are you working on? Right now I'm working on a baby hat. I don't know if you can see it. And it matches, it will match this little baby sweater. Oh, that I you. have to weave the ends in. This is a hat in progress. And then I found, it's really cute. I had done one set like this, uh, booties and a diaper cover to match. And I finished my little felted pumpkin, which I love doing. And I did the assigned pooling shawl. I did the, the larger one. I picked up the extra skein of yarn. So it really came out pretty. And oh, the way the skeins were, the second one was a little lighter. So it looks almost like an ombre. It really came out pretty. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Neat. But while I'm on... I wanted to thank everybody who sent hats to my daughter's school. I had put something on Facebook. My daughter is an assistant principal in a school where there are, there's extreme poverty. Many of the children are in homeless shelters and it, it's just very sad stories there. So I had put something on the Facebook site and so many people have 
sent hats to her school and they get funding from various people. In fact, from certain famous people will even send funds to the school and they're able to get many of them winter coats. So now they have, I always send the hats every year, but now they have so many more hats to go with these coats. So I just wanted to thank everyone. Oh, that's my so daughter, wonderful. my daughter submit, submitted a request to get onto our Facebook site. Her name is Allison Goldblum. So she said once she's accepted, she wants to post, you know, thank you to everyone and some pictures of the hat. Okay, we'll let Karen know she she does all the approving. Um, I missed that whole thing, so I'm so glad that other people did not miss it and that it has. It was um, overwhelming. Oh, that's said. so lovely. Really well, if, overwhelming. If there's more need, um, there's anyone... always a need. These children, many are in homeless shelters. I know there's one little boy that really is. It, it like tugs at your heart and the hat I made him last year got stolen in the homeless shelter. So this year I made skull hats for my grandchildren for Halloween. So I had Allison ask him which she'd rather have a regular hat or a skull hat. So he wanted a skull hat. So I sent his to him and a few extra and some regular ones, but it's, there is a constant need. It will never end. These children it's sad. It's very sad. It makes you realize how lucky you are. Um, if she still needs, and if it, if the need is, if you get oversaturated on hats and need something else, um, message into support or hello at yarnier.com and we can include it in a newsletter. Oh, thank like, you. Like thank where you. to send them or whatever. Um, we're happy to do that. I don't, Oh, I try to keep you. up with everything, but I don't always see everything on social. So um, stuff like that, when it's our own, like our yarn yayers and their people, we're happy to support. We can't support everybody in all the world, but when it's stuff that's connected to, to our little community, we're always happy to support. Thank you. So many people were so generous, really, yeah, with the time and the expense. So happy to hear. Really heartwarming. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gail. Um, are you going to see your grandkids for Halloween? Did we talk about Halloween? I don't think we did. I won't see them for Halloween. I, I saw them last weekend. So I brought their skull hats down. The four of them had them on all different colors. They look really cute. And I had mine on. So we had our animals. Oh, that's adorable. That's so yeah. cute. Okay, before we go to the next one, I'm going to do one giveaway and then we'll do more and then I'll come and then I'll find another thing and then we'll... Uh, so, again, so, again, so again, this will be, I have uh, a few of the pumpkin purses that we have. Um, Chris, would you mind putting the link in the chat so people can see in case they don't know? Um, they're like jack-o'-lantern purse purses. All right. According to Martha Stewart Magazine, if one wanted to be, and I'm not going to show you for too long, so make sure you look, a jellyfish for Halloween using an umbrella. What would make the, don't know what the technical word is, the hangy parts of a jellyfish, um, would it be iridescent pom-poms? So A, iridescent pom-poms, B, bubble wrap, C, strips of tulle. So A, iridescent pom-poms, B, bubble wrap, C, strips of tulle, put it in the thing, in the thing. Okay, who, the first one to get it right is Deborah Brinkman. B, bubble wrap. All right. So Deborah, got yourself a purse. All right, I'll come up with another thing. Thank you for playing. While Lori uh, Rinkoff, why don't you share, if you don't mind, Halloween, what you're working on, all the things. So we have something really cool planned for Halloween at work. I'm so excited. We have a teacher this year that has an assistance dog and I'm a dog lover Yeah, <laughs> and I'm always trying to, you know, make him misbehave because that's fun. But um, <laughs> so it's kind of different, but it's a Dalmatian, which yeah. in my experience, Dalmatians aren't the best, but this is a really good dog. So they thought it'd be cute this year. She's going to be Cruella and then the other teachers are all going to be Dalmatians. 
And then, so we in the office were not invited. And um, so we're going to be dog catchers and nobody knows yet. (laughs) We're building some scary dog catcher uniforms, which is, it's really ironic because we're really, really dog lovers, all of us. So, and she knows it, but it'll be fun. I'm excited about that. And then I have, I live in the neighborhood where my school is. So I go all out for Halloween. I do these huge goodie bags with a pencil, a bookmark, a bunch of candy, bouncy balls, all kinds of fun stuff. So I make enough of those. So if every kid comes by, plus the kids that, you know, come in from outside, um, it's a lot, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, I don't know about this year because the highs, I think 42 right now. So it might be one of those slow years, but that sounds delightful to me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's fun. That's so I'm on the Stephen West knit along. It's the first time I tried it. I don't know if anybody wants to see it because we're only on clue three. Is there anybody? That, is there anybody that does not want to see it? I'm waiting for the chat. I'm going to give you five, four, three, two, one. All right, you can show us. So I don't know if anybody heard, but there was a big scandal when he first put clue one out. A bunch of people thought it resembled a swastika. Oh, so we did hear that. And they had to pull it back, right? He pulled it back and scrambled. So this is what it looks like. It's just basically a square that radiates out. That's clue one. And then clue two. Was that the original clue or is that the new clue? No, this is the second one. It's just a square. And then clue two. I'm sorry, my thing's too close. Clue two is just this little extra um, eyelet section. Clue three is what I'm falling behind on. The next one comes out tomorrow and I'm not halfway done. But it's these long things with this super cute pattern. Oops. We did that. That's your card. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, I love it. But I'm only on the first half. That's so. a downright tame for Stephen West. Well, that's, you know, because I've seen his stuff and I was always afraid to join. Cause I'm not, you know, super skilled, but, um, I just thought this year, you know, I've been doing some fun stuff. I'm going to try it. And I think because he went with the gradient yarn, he's keeping the gradient, you know, theme. And so he's not, it doesn't have the crazy shapes that go all over the place. Yeah. So clue four is out tomorrow, but I'm not going to be ready to knit in any way. So, but it's fun. I'm glad I did it. Um, anything else before we? No, I'm also looking for. Sorry. All right, sounds good. Thank you for sharing. Um, Elizabeth Barron, what are you working on? Hello, I am working on the um felted pumpkin, as a lot of you are. I'm trying to turn him into a jack o' lantern. I love it. I love it. So I'm doing that. I've been working on the past, um, I guess, three weeks or so, this past month. I've been working on the square from um, one of the block last year's block first, the first, the first block builders club. I'm working on the. What made you get to that? Oh, that's a good one. I yeah. like that yarn too. Yeah, thank you. That's from um I think that's from Space Cadet. Oh, I haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah. Uh, that's oh. nice stuff. Yeah, I need to go look. It's been a minute since I've seen that's great. So that's from Space Cadet. And this weekend my niece um did the sewing for me and put the edge on my um Ouija board pillow. Oh yeah. So I kept it simple. And mm-hmm. I just did the um I just did the I cord on it. I like the I cord by itself, yeah, honestly. It, it looks I really, nice and it looks classic and yeah, I actually I, I really like that decision. I just didn't think that I felt like I needed to bring more to it because that would have been a shorter thing, but I, I totally get that and I think that that would look great. So for those of you that oh, you know what? I have the sample here. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about, um, we had these pillow embellishments that we did for the retreat and the knit or the crochet one you already saw um, earlier, but for the knit one, 
we had a an edging that was like the sawtooth uh, lace situation, but we also had an edging that was just applied I-cord um, that was knit while you're applying it to a previously blanket stitched edge. So um, it was kind of fun and simple and not a lot, but I think it just adds just the right, like if she's saying she was just gonna do that. And I think especially with this, fun hand-dyed yarn from um, Oink Pidmoots. It's just like enough handmade flair. Yeah, I did. It's that. just a classic look. Yeah. And for Halloween, I am going to see Depeche Mode at the Boston. Stop it. Love it. Oh, yeah. I I go back and forth about whether or not I want to ever see them again since the whole band is, you know, not alive. Um, but I'm sure they're, it's going to be amazing. I just, that was my very first concert in 1988. Oh, oh what? Uh, I've never seen them. That's so funny. Oh, Music for the Masses, 1988. Yeah. Okay. It's the actual show I was at, at the pas at the Pasadena Rose Bowl, they recorded. So if you find like live 1988 music. For okay. the Masses, I can hear Vicky cheering or singing. Or uh, 12 year old Vicky was all over it. Um. Yeah. So that's amazing. Oh, you've never seen them before it's lovely it's you're gonna have a lovely time yeah and it's kind of cool that it's on halloween and yeah i mean i feel like then music blends himself to halloween uh, so. especially if they sing blasphemous rumors and then it <laughs> yeah. starts raining like it did on the show i went to and lightning yes okay i know it's good stuff <laughs> oh that's rad yeah i'll have such a good time thank you okay we're gonna do another our second of three. All right. We're moving on to food for Halloween parties. I got to go to speaker so I can see if my own camera. Let's see. Speaker. Nope, that didn't work. Gallery. All right. According to Martha Stewart Magazine, Halloween edition, um, November 2010. Not a, that doesn't make sense, November. What? Oh, God. So these are witch's fingers cookies. What is used to make the witch's finger nails? Is it A, blanched almonds, B, parchment paper, C, artisanal onion skin? So A, blanched almonds, B, parchment paper, C, artisanal onion skin. Uh, the answer is, who's first? A20. Well, what's the I right think answer? The answer is A, it's blanched almonds. I just wanted to see who was the first one. I well, think it it's Gail. Like it is Gail. Gail. Gail, blanched almonds. Thank you. Hey, for, sir, I don't know what an artisan, what would make an onion skin artisanal. I just threw that word in there to, to throw you. <laughs> okay. So Gail, Gail, what's your last name? So I can remember. Natris with an okay. N like Nancy. Natris. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. We'll do one more in a minute after we see. Let's see. Uh, Callie, would you like to share? You don't I have was, to. No, I was going to work on the felted pumpkin, but I realized opening up the box that I would need to watch the uh, tutorial video and hadn't done that ahead of time. Oh, so, you just I'm, start, you start by just wrapping the big piece around it. Okay. And then you <laughs> rip off the rest and then you just start punching. That's it. That's the start. After, <laughs> yeah, after that, I just poked my own finger. Um, yeah, I, uh, so you can start doing that. So instead, I pulled out my uh, um, ongoing project that I've been working on for uh, about the same amount of time I've been with Yarnier, um, which is making stockings for my nephews and my brother-in-law. Oh, that's so, I'm so nice. finally starting the third one. Um, and this is all I have 
completed with it so far is you know basically what? the top. <laughs> but you're doing it. I am doing it. Um, I discovered during this sitting that um, I left off a stitch for one of the letters, so it was going to come off wrong. So now I have to back stitch through that. Um, but this is what the finalized stocking will look like. Uh, oh, nice. So it's got a Santa face and then it's got um, uh, candy canes in the center. Aww. And then it has um, jingle bells throughout. I love and it. That's old school. It is. It's um, a Bernay, Bernat um, mm -hmm. pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, myself, my sister and our cousins all have matching ones. So when she started having kids, I was like, okay, then I need to match your stocking. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Well, that is, that's a good auntie. Are you doing anything for Halloween? Probably not. Um, I'm never a big Halloween person and I just moved the summer. So I don't know um, what the popularity is of my area of town for Halloween. Yeah. But um, town has a big, they call it the Stardust Ball. And it is the big thing. So it's all um, a costume party. Uh, ball so where are you I'm in Sitka Alaska now oh wow so I moved uh down <laughs> moved south <laughs> to warmer weather <laughs> that's warmer where you are now yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> we are um over the weekend um it finally stopped raining and we got our first few frosts and it has been like four straight days of clear skies so we are now in the low 30s every day. And um, back home in the Anchorage area, they've had snow on the ground a few times. And my parents have had nine degree mornings when they've woken up. So we are warmer. It's a little early for that. <laughs> Not for Alaska. <laughs> oh, gosh. Fairbanks already has over seven inches of snow on the ground. How long does that last? Does it go all the way through May or does or do you end earlier too? Um, for the Anchorage area, you can still get some snow in May, but I'd say most of the snow stops in April. And then it just depends on how much snow we got through the winter, how long it takes to melt away. Um, Fairbanks probably, I think they usually get some more snow in May. Yeah, it just kind of depends on those spring storms. It's a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. But I I don't know yet. Um, down here in Sitka, um, it's a lot more like Pacific Northwest, like Oregon, Washington weather. Um, and so October is the rainy month. And then I'll see how the rest of the winter goes. And they kind of go in and out of snow but I've heard that the city no longer has snow plows. So if that tells you anything. They're going to get big snowfall. It's going to be a <laughs> long winter. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. I guess they go around with regular pickup truck plows um, when they do get snow. So. Holy moly. Well, yeah. good thing you're a knitter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I did find... Um, there's a few knitting groups in town, and one of them is directly around the corner from where I live. So All it's right, good job. not even a block. Excellent. That's good news. It is. I said I don't even have an excuse to miss knitting night there. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. What time is it in Alaska? It is 530. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, this hour went by fast. All right, I want to hear from anybody who wants to uh who wants to share, but first let's do the last one that I'm gonna make up on the spot. So if you wanted to do a spooky cocktail um called an eyeball highball, so you need you need ice cubes <laughs> that vaguely look like 
eyeballs. Do you get an eyeball mold, A, B, cut olives in half, or C, have the foresight to order the gumballs that are already painted like eye eyeballs? Okay, so. What's the right answer? I, I want to make sure everybody gets a gets a chance. So um, A was buying the molds that are eyeball shaped. B was cutting olives in half and C was ordering gumballs. Come on, lazy people. Okay, the and the correct answer is B, straight up olives. It's a cocktail, it's a highball. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you cut them in half because they're the, you know, it looks like they might have been pimento olives. So there's a little bit of red in there for extra grossness. <laughs> All right. Uh, did anybody get it? Kale. Kale, you already got one. I got one. So you can give it to the next person. <laughs> I mean, you might be the only person that got it. I think oh. she's the only one who answered correctly. How many gr grandchildren do you have? Four. Mm -hmm. Do they all carry purses? What only one is a girl. I mean, so I guess she don't have to be a girl it. to carry a purse, but okay. So she gets she gets one. Maybe I'll do one more question to make it fair. In the meantime, okay. who else would like to show? And Gail, you're gonna have to be like Oprah with the Emmys and just bow out, even though we know that you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I usually am not fast on this computer. <laughs> Um, would anybody else like to share before we close out? I know I didn't get everybody. I'm, uh, I will, Ellen? it's Ellen. I'm, I'm working on, I gotta get the right name. The Plymouth Yarns Hot Cakes Asymmetric scar, scar Shawl because I went to my favorite yarn shop up north. It, it was safe with the row construction being almost done and made it easier to get in and out of. And here it, uh, needles. Here it is. Oh, beautiful. I got the link. This is the evil yarn shop in northern Michigan that you have to go through a bakery to get to it. Oh, Whew. that's so mean. I put, I, I put it up there. Thank you. Because I've only lost the pattern three, the paper pattern three times. It's real easy. And the other thing I've been doing is, unfortunately, a yarn shop in my area is closing. And they have a project where they take pieces of fleece and cut holes into them. And then you make blank, you make crochet edging on it. Uh -huh. And they give them to cancer people. It's, um, Knit Mich it's called Knit Michigan Comfort and Care. And so I went out to see them. And I got, a, got one of the things and I'm taking it back to them later in the week. For the local Detroit area people, it's the knit stop in Clawson. And they'll probably be done by the 18th of, no of, of November. That is a good day. That's my birthday. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Would anybody else like to? Are we good? Have we come to, have we come to the end? Ah, I got to find another question then. All right. What about maybe one more person can share and buy me some time. Jennifer, I see that you're kind of moving your camera like you might want to share. Which Jennifer? Me? Any of the Jennifers. Uh, Jennifer <laughs> Anderson, but Jen B, you, I feel like you both could share and buy me some time. <laughs> So the um, the last meetup, everybody was talking about the assigned pooling and everybody's getting into the, the shawl and I, I had already made it or the scarf let and I already made it. So I spun up, I had a gray and orange fiber braid. I spun it up because somebody said four to one. So I spun four parts orange to every one part gray and, and did that over and over and over again. 
And then I just kind of, the ends aren't moving in because this is still drying, but I kind of made my own little assigned cooling cowl, oh, adding some black around neat. it for Halloween. <laughs> wow. Oh, I, I love, love it. it. Wow. So, yeah. That was, it was a lot of fun. And my, my own hands fun, which is still terrible. I'll get it one of these days. Um, but yeah, everybody I, just totally inspired me to make my own assigned pulling yarn. <laughs> that, is so that is so cool. nice. That's so fun. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> well done. I uh, love that. Cool. I love that. It was it was awesome. And you guys, everybody kept talking about it. I'm like, I gotta do something else with it. Gotta do something else mm. with it. It was fun. Did I buy you enough time? You did, but <laughs> other Jennifer Anderson, if you have something to share. Hi, everybody. I'm actually working on last year's October box. And while we were chatting, I unwound the scrumptious. It's the zombie yarn from yeah. last year. Yeah. And I was, I was literally been just squeezing it. It's just so, I, I just love the, it just feels so good. I know. And I'm retired. I mean, she deserved it, but she retired. It makes me sad. The oh, pumpkin yeah. Scissors. The pumpkin scissors. Oh. From last October. I was just looking, I was hoping that, uh, so those are Kelmscott designs. I was hoping that she made little tree ones for the Christmas retreat, but she does not. Mm -hmm. One of the little like tree shapes. Yeah. So cute. Love so I'm it. excited. I'll be, I'll be knitting up a pumpkin tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow. I'm in Canada and it's, it's nice and cold here. So it's great, great weather for knitting. You can all come and visit me if, if you want some nice cozy, if, if, if you want to be cold and just huddle up by a fire and, and knit all winter. I mean, that was, sounds delightful. <laughs> I love the idea of just being snowed in. I live in a small town right by Lake Huron mm -hmm. and uh, we get some really intense winters. We get tons of snow. Often our uh, the road literally gets closed. So you can't leave town. And I love that. I'm like, yay, I get snowed in. I get to just sit around in my yeah, jammies and knit. Because there's an excuse. So yeah. where are you, Nate? My favorite my neighbor to the south. I live so in Detroit. I, I live okay. in Detroit area. So you're so Windsor is our neighbor to the south. So I'm in a small town called Kincardin, Kincardin, okay. Ontario, which is right on Lake Huron. So I'm only four blocks from from the lake. I lived in Toronto most of my life, but I moved here during the pandemic and I just love it. I just love it. It's it's just a beautiful small town. So, so. your earrings are going to lead into my question. Yeah. Okay. So if you wanted to create a spider web um, window cling, would you use actual uh, plastic cling wrap, Elmer's glue, or hot glue gun? Hmm. I didn't give you letters, but yeah. So I think what I said was the order was A, plastic wrap, yep. B, Elmer's glue, C, glue yep. gun? Okay. Yep. All right, the answer is, I can't see what I'm doing again. Okay, the answer is a glue gun. Look, you can make these little oh. clear clings. I have all to you, tell my sister. All you have to do, according to the Marthas, is you draw it out with a marker and then you just trace it and then peel it off. Oh, Martha loves her glue gun. I mean, <laughs> I know that. Wow. Isn't that so clever? That's Good great. Um, I didn't see who got it. Chris, did you? Uh, so it's C. 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 Like C. C. Glue gun. Sarah Garner. Sarah Garner. Yeah. Hooray! Yay. See, Sarah, aren't you glad that you started coming to these? I am. <laughs> I'm glad you guys started inviting me. <laughs> Wait. What do you mean? You weren't invited before? I didn't know about them. So, okay. um, 
yeah then i found out about the insider stuff i'm like well hey i should be an insider so, so let me ask you this you didn't know about them because you're new to yarn yay or you didn't know i'm trying to find out if we have a hole in our communication is where i'm getting at i think I'm there's a hard hole. time communicating that yeah. <laughs> i think there's a hole because i started getting yarn yay in oh boy maybe february march Okay, and, and I didn't know about it for a few months after that, because I would see like the things about oh the insiders are meeting, and I was kind of thinking, well, I don't know how to be an insider. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the part of that is is one hundred percent my fault because, I mean, arguably it all is, but but specifically my fault because I stopped doing the I used to every month do what to knit spec'd, which was just a calendar of events. And we frankly, we just got spread too thin to keep doing that. So we added a calendar to our website, which I'm not even entirely sure that is public. I mean, Gosh. it's public, but linked to publicly. And we haven't added stuff like that. However, that still requires people to go to it to see. So we need to be, we need to figure that out because we should be, there should be a way that we often tell people these things. Um, so that's good to know. Good intel. Yeah, because I think I found out about it then because I would see people talk about it on the group. And then I think you said, mentioned something in, in something saying, hey, you know, if you're a monthly subscriber, you can be an insider. Make sure you let us know so you can be an insider. And so well, I, oh. these you don't have to be an insider for. Those are for like the coffee talk. This is just like anybody can come. You don't even have to be oh, a subscriber. Okay. Oh, wow. But the insiders, <laughs> the insiders are, um, we do a coffee talk that's just me and it's a small group and I do a really sort of in-depth unboxing and that happens on the second of every month and um and then you get early access to add on yarn and um to some other things as well you get your your coupon code earlier and you get your boxes a week earlier well give or take um so that's the kind of thing okay there was a I think for the first time, I'm I'm sure it's been out there before, but Facebook did have a big blast today about this. Um, so that was a good communication that came out today about tonight's. Oh, we do that every we do that every month. Is and it every? I, and okay. I just started doing a one hour before email. Um, it was supposed to be twenty four hours and then one hour, um, before, but I didn't get the twenty four hour one out. So. Yeah. One uh, hour okay. one help though. That was good. Yeah, I did. Oh, good. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Because then I went looking for the link and I, I'm like, oh, I got a new email. <laughs> okay, good. Um, and then I thought about doing the text too, but there's like three people that actually opted in for text. So I don't always get to that. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's so hard because we want to. We don't want people to feel like they're getting the same, oh, it's just another email. I'm not going to open it because it always says the same thing. But then at the same point time, you want to make sure that people are getting the information. It's a fine, it's a fine balance. So yeah. um, maybe that's something else we can add to the product pages too, specifically for the monthly boxes. Like just add the link in the time because it's always, it's always the last Wednesday, right? Yep, fourth Wednesday. Unless there's some weird holiday or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, next month when I see you, I will be back from Iceland and hopefully have all kinds of stories about yarn being sold in gas stations and fairy <laughs> sweaters and that kind of thing. So that's that. I'll see you on the boards in the meantime. Thank you, everyone. Have a happy Halloween and if you're interested in the Christmas mini retreat, keep your eyes open tomorrow for um, the details. We'll we'll only have 50 total spots. Um, and it, it was a really good time last time. So if you can swing it, I would love if you would be a part of it. All right, have a great night. Bye everyone. Thank you, Vicki. Have a wonderful Bye. trip. Have Thank a good you. birthday. Thank you. Bye.